Lafayette had secretly signed up for the American cause in December of 1776 through Silas Dean, the agent for the American colonies in Paris. Dean agreed to Lafayette's request for the highest rank available, a major generalship, and even more readily to Lafayette's insistence that his service be without pay. On April 20th, 1777, in direct defiance of the orders of the King of France and his powerful father-in-law, Lafayette and 15 other officers embarked for America on board the Victoire, a ship purchased by Lafayette for the journey. Seasickness, military studies, and English lessons occupied him for much of the dreary two-month voyage. He also penned an extended letter of apology to his pregnant wife, Adrienne, whom he had not told he was going to America. <laughs> I trust that for my sake, you will become a good American, he wrote. The welfare of America is intimately connected with the happiness of all mankind. She will become the respectable and safe asylum of virtue, integrity, tolerance, equality, and a peaceful liberty. Lafayette's manners, his modesty, his eagerness to learn English, and his enthusiasm for the cause quickly won over the commanding general, George Washington, who invited Lafayette to become one of his aides de camp. Washington assured the young Marquis that he would be happy to be regarded as a father and friend. Lafayette was deeply honored and the friendship blossomed. What was it about this 19-year-old Frenchman that enabled him to become an instant major general in the Continental Army and trusted friend, aide-de-camp, and confidant to its highest officer, General George Washington? Just days after his 20th birthday in September 1777, Lafayette had the chance to further impress Washington and the other American officers, this time with his courage and coolness under fire. Shot in the calf as he rallied a brigade, he became an immediate hero. Washington, writing to a friend, described Lafayette's talents this way. He possesses uncommon military talents, is of quick and sound judgment, persevering and enterprising without rashness, and besides these, he is of a very conciliating temper and perfectly sober, which are qualities that rarely coincide in the same person. Professor Lloyd Kramer, in his excellent book, Lafayette in Two Worlds, suggests the following, and I'm quoting, Lafayette's friendship with Washington owed much of its enormous success to the young Frenchman's ability to learn from and sympathize with the American commander without becoming a sycophant. Washington was a shrewd judge of character and never would have warmed to Lafayette if he had been only a superficial, ingratiating romantic. As for the friendship between Lafayette and Washington after the War for American Independence was won, it endured until Washington's death in 1799. They saw each other only once more in 1784 when Lafayette again visited America and spent two happy weeks at Mount Vernon. With his letter of March 17, 1790, Lafayette sent to Washington the key to the Bastille, whose demolition he had ordered as head of the Paris National Guard. It is a tribute, he wrote, which I owe as a son to my adoptive father, as an aide de camp to my general, and as a missionary of liberty to its patriarch.